I analyzed over 100 replays of Faker's games and discovered an insane ward strategy that he uses every single game to stomp ranked. I was then sent into the depraved depths of low elo, North American solo queue, to test this strategy to see if they work for us regular mortals. On top of that, I wasn't allowed to just spam games and cherry pick the ones where it worked. All the replays that you'll see in this guide were from the first six games I played. This was to make sure that what you're about to learn is not only consistently effective, but also to see if this strategy is easy to execute without having to spend hundreds of games to master. Spoiler alert, I won every game, this ward is overpowered, and Faker is a god. Alright, to start. For the sake of this guide, we'll call this the Faker Ward. This is a strategy Faker uses at the start of every one of his games. Before the landing phase even starts, he'll look to get a ward on the enemy's raptors right here at 115 to 122 at the latest, so he can then get back to lane in time. This one single ward will make the enemy jungler's life a living hell. Let me explain. So here you see the enemy Lee Sin does red, Krugs into Raptors. And yet, despite placing the ward so early, it stays alive long enough to catch the Lee Sin not only do Raptors, but then also looking to do a gank on mid lane. In this game, Lee Sin clearly thinks he'll be adding a Faker kill to his highlight reel. In reality, he just activated Faker's trap card, setting up an incredibly easy counter gank for his own jungler. And just like that, with one simple ward, he shuts down the enemy jungler in the first three minutes and gets himself first blood. The real beauty of this, though, is that you don't need to actually get a counter gank for this to be useful. In this game, Faker places the same ward at Raptors at the start of the game. This not only spots the enemy Jarvan starting at Raptors, but it then shows him moving up towards his red. After about 10 to 15 seconds, we don't see Jarvan pass back over the Raptor ward, which means he's now heading to his Krux. This means we know Jarvan's exact opening route and exactly where he is for the first three minutes in the game. And the best part is the ward will last long enough to actually see if Jarvan then heads to his blue side after he does Krugs. Of course, this is Korean Challenger, so Jarvan knows all this and just takes a slightly slower path to avoid the ward. But keep in mind, in your own solo queue games, junglers aren't that clever. That's what's known as foreshadowing. And so we'll often just run back over it thinking it must have expired, giving you full knowledge of them. Now, I know a lot of you are already thinking, hey, what if they started their blue buff though? Well, this is what's so genius about this strategy. If an enemy jungler starts at their blue, they literally will never do blue gromp wolves into then ganking mid lane. I promise you will never see this jungle route in your games. It's incredibly unpopular. This is because they will lack red buff, which the added slow and damage helps with ganks. And with how the train is on the blue buff side, it's a bigger time investment for them to go all the way to mid compared to the terrain on the red buff, which is really fast to go to mid. What all this means is that when a jungler starts blue and does blue gromp wolves, well, that raptor ward once again catches them when they get to their raptors, revealing their entire route. Still, I know some of you are skeptical and are thinking, yeah, but like if the enemy starts red buff, then does raptors, sure I see them, but then once they move to their blue side, I have no information on them. And this is not only normal, but is actually a key part of how Faker then avoids ganks. So stay with me here. Once you see the enemy jungler pass over the ward and head to their blue side, then you want to start hugging the side of the lane that's closest to your raptor ward. This will make you significantly harder to gank. Faker actually takes this concept a step further by double warding one side of the map. You can see this later on into laning. Faker goes for another raptor ward, but then right after he goes to place a control ward in the pixel brush. In this case, it seems a bit strange, right? Considering he completely lacks vision on the bot side. Wouldn't it be better to spread out vision and have a ward on the raptor camp than a control ward on the bottom side? That way you're protected from ganks on either side. Well, the problem is there is no single ward that will protect you from every ganking angle. A ward in the lane brush lets junglers take this route to avoid it and sneak up behind you. If you only have a ward on raptors, well then it leaves you vulnerable to a jungler coming the long way from river. And the most ideal ward, a pixel brush ward, when placed on the edge of the brush like this will technically protect you from nearly every single angle, but you will need godlike map awareness and reaction times as a jungler hugging close will only be shown for less than a second and already be extremely close to ganking you. This is is why you need to start implementing the double ward setup in your own games. Simply place a control ward in the pixel brush and a trinket ward on the raptor camp. You will get all the scouting benefits from the raptor ward that we went over earlier while having that insane amount of reaction time to a jungler gank coming your way. This is on top of making counter ganks very easy to set up. All you have to do then is hug the side of the lane closest to your wards to compensate for the other side being dark and if an enemy jungler ganks you, well, you have ample time to run away. If all of this wasn't enough, the Raptor Ward is also great at setting up a tactic known as a fake roam. For example, here you see Faker pushes an enemy to his tower to pin them down and get lane priority. He then heads topside to pretend like he's reacting to the fight going on there, but as he moves there, he drops a Raptor Ward. Now, as he turns this corner, the enemy loses vision, but his own ward will let him see if the enemy is going to follow his roam. And since he does, he now has the jump on rise, setting up an easy solo kill. All right, now just because Faker does it doesn't mean it's automatically going to work in your own games. I know, blasphemous. So that's why I I went out and thoroughly tested all of these strategies in ranks gold to platinum. 
Why gold to platinum? Well, literally 96% of the entire ranked player base is platinum or lower. So it's the best representation of what you're going to experience in your own games. And remember, I didn't just spam games and cherry pick the ones that worked. All the replays of mine that you're going to see were in the first six games I played in a row. Before we get into that first game though, guides like this are only made possible by our website skillcap.com. It's there we have premium courses for every role and skill that you need to learn to improve fast and rank up. Take our wave control course. While you wait for your next game to start, you can learn freezing, fast pushing, slow pushing, bouncing waves. The list goes on all in just a few minutes to maximize your improvement rate. Or maybe you just like seeing your opponent's health go to zero. Well, you'll love our trading course. We even have a skill test at the end so you can see how good you truly are. Players just like you are leaving five star reviews and raving at how helpful these courses are. That's not all we offer though, as every week we release 10 brand new smurf commentaries where a challenger player teaches you how to climb out of the exact rank you're stuck in. And if you're looking for something more personal instead, then we got you covered with one-on-one -on -one coaching from our trained challenger experts. All of this seems too good to be true, well don't worry, we're backed by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill capped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. All right, so jumping into the first game, I look to execute the Faker Ward strategy in Gold Elo. I place the ward down at the Raptors and head back to lane. Now here's the funny thing. Vi actually ends up doing like the one route that will avoid this ward, which is red into immediately going into her blue side. And so I know you're probably thinking, wow, already the Faker Ward is completely useless. See, these low Elo junglers are completely unpredictable. Here's the thing, for this to work, you need to track the enemy jungler's starting location every game. It's very simple to do. Just look at which side lane arrives late. Here we see Renekton show first, which means Vi is getting a leash from her bot lane at her red buff. This means if we fast forward, since Vi hasn't shown on her raptors by the time the ward expires, we now know she must have passed topside. So all we have to do is make sure to hug that bottom side of the lane like we taught you earlier. And just like that, we avoid a gank, waste the enemy jungler's time, reveal them on the map for our team, but wait, there's more. You see, now that she's crossed over to the bottom side of the map, we can implement this exact same concept of hugging one side, but this time we hug the top side since we know she's now on the bottom side of the the map. In this case, it actually helps us dodge a Shaco support looking to level 3 roam, which we easily escape again just by running towards the top side of the map. So yeah, we're off to a good start. We dodged two ganks in the first four minutes using the Faker Ward. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's only the first game. So moving into our second game, I again start out with the same Faker Ward. This time, the enemy juggler actually starts at their blue buff and then does the very standard blue gromp into wolves. At this point, I catch them at their raptors and spot them moving to actually invade our blue buff. This gives both us and our jungler ample time to react, and so we simply collapse to pick up our free kill in the jungle. At this point, I was honestly pretty surprised. First two games that I'm already getting insane results. So on to game three, and this is the one that really convinced me how insanely OP this is. So I place the ward down as usual and head back to lane. In the meantime though, the enemy jungler does what can only be described as one dimensional chess blindfolded while thinking you're playing checkers. They fail a raptor invade level one, then pivots to try and level one gank a top laner heading back to lane into then pivoting again into a level one invade without flash this time on the red buff while having low HP and against an Ivern. Needless to say, this did not work at all. Here's the crazy thing though. The Raptor Ward still revealed this jungler's route, even when they did the most ridiculous nonsensical opening. When Evelyn respawned, she actually went straight to her Raptors. So I now know she'll be doing her rednecks, then likely Krugs. So I make sure to hug the top side of the map. Sure enough, this makes for an incredibly easy escape when Evelyn ganks me. And so now, just like last time, we know she's on the top side of the map, which means we hug the bot side. And again, super easy escape of a gank, wasting the enemy jungler's time and revealing them on the map. The thing is though, at this moment, I realized there was a hidden passive to this faker ward. You see, while I'm wasting the jungler's time, it means my jungler is always free to gank any lane with absolute knowledge they can't be counter ganked. Like imagine how this gank would have gone if Evelyn counter ganked it instead of ganking me mid lane. Basically, this strategy will just passively boost your chances of having winning teammates. All right, again, reminder, all of these games are played in a row and heading into my fourth game, I was sure that this was gonna be the one that something would go wrong. With the Faker Ward placed down, I lane as normal. Shortly after, I spot the enemy jungler at their Raptors. A little pro tip I'm sure some of you know, each jungle camp is worth four CS. So when I spot Kha'Zix here, you wanna make sure that you hit tab to check his CS. We can see that he has 12, which means he's done blue, grump, and wolves. Basically, I now know his exact path. And it's at this point, I get a little cocky. I channel my inner Faker and decided with my wave crashing, I had a timing window to mess with the enemy jungler. So I pop in and casually throw an orb at him in the brush. In retrospect, this did absolutely nothing except defend the entire enemy team and they all stop what they're doing immediately and run directly at me. But I keep calm and think of what Faker would do. Well, simple, kite towards the top side of the map. 
Now, at this exact frame, I had deja vu. I was like, isn't this exactly what Faker did to set up a counter gank? So I just make sure to kite to my jungler, and the rest is history. I've now ascended to an unofficial Korean smurf. And for those wondering, yes, this did in fact cause Kha'Zix to reset his red buff, wasting his time, and at the end of the day, I think all laners can take solace in this jungler's misery. This was only one part of the equation, though. We also saw Faker implement the double ward technique once he was able to purchase a control ward. So jumping back to the first game, you can see it's past 10 minutes, and I see my jungler looking to gank top. Unfortunately, our Urgot values three caster minions more than his teammate's life, and Rek'Sai is forced to flash, and I already know he's fuming. And as any good mid laner should do, I use my lane priority to be the first to rotate to this fight topside. I immediately get punished for trying to do the right thing, and am forced to blow my ult and run with my tail between my legs. I then shove my lane to create a recall timing and place a ward on the raptors. Now, with the control ward I placed earlier in the pixel brush and a ward on their raptors, I have my double ward set up. I then proceed to play it like an aggressive psychopath, hugging my warded side to really put this strategy to the test. The pressure I'm putting down inevitably leads to a gank, but since I'm hugging my wards, it lets me easily kite at a safe distance and land a charm to actually set up an easy kill. Doesn't stop here though, I also discovered a hidden benefit to this double ward setup in the fourth game I played. It's around six minutes and I place a control ward in the pixel brush and a ward on the raptors. I head back to my lane, and to my surprise, my jungler is actually going to gank my lane. And it's at this point I realized why this is happening for the first time in my life. The double ward coverage makes it very safe for your jungler to look for a gank for you. There's very low risk of him running into an enemy jungler. And at the same time, it means there's only one brush, the lane brush, that he has to check for wards. So with Viger's flashdown, as soon as he moves up the lane, I jump in, get a free kill in a spot where I usually never get jungle ganks in solo queue. And this theme of making the game super easy for your jungler actually showed itself again in game five. It's around eight minutes and I set up my double wards. Shortly after, this spots Rengar taking the scuttle, which means my jungler is free to try and gank bot without a risk of a counter gank. Nothing happens, but he now knows it's safe to counter jungle Rengar's bot side camps. After Rengar's finished with the scuttle, we then spot him at the raptors. Again, this informs Jarvan it's now safe to steal the enemy's wolves. And then after raptors, we see Rengar again head back into river, at which point he kills the control ward. This means Jarvan still knows Rengar is topside, making it safe for him to collapse on bot lane. I'm pretty much giving my jungler complete map hacks with those two wards. And before you think I'm exaggerating when I say that, there's actually a hidden additional part to the double ward tactic. A lot of the time, as you go to set up these double wards, the Squire's Bloom Plant will be alive. You want to use this in two main ways. First is to activate it so it reveals the enemy's red buff and Krug camp. You want to do this if both camps are shown as alive on your minimap. However, in this game, you can see only the Krugs are shown as alive, so I aim the plant in such a way that it reveals the Krug camp, but also a large portion to the right of it to spot incoming ganks on my bot lane. And you guessed it, this actually catches the enemy jungler, red-handed going for a bot gank. You can see how this was key in preventing Hecarim from face-checking the brush and forcing a gank bot side. Instead, he waits in the brush to counter gank, which would have actually worked if not for Quinn's W revealing him. Check this out though. Hitting the Squire Spoon revealed Karthus's Krugs are down, and my Raptor Ward is revealing his Raptors are alive. At the same time, the Control Ward in the Pixel Brush gives Hecarim confidence that he won't be moving over any wards, and so he actually chooses to jump Karthus at his Raptors. Meanwhile, with all this vision I have, I can see this earlier than the opposing mid laner, which sets me up to react first. And when all is said and done, and the fight is over, I've gained a double kill and double buffs. Keep in mind, all of these game-changing decisions were all set up just by placing these two wards and hitting a Scryer's Bloom. Alright, so let's quickly recap what you need to start doing in your own games. Place a ward on the raptors at around 115 to 122. Also, make sure to watch the side lanes to see which one appears first. Whichever side lane is late is giving a leash to the jungler on that side of the map. This reveals their starting location. Once the ward is down, until you spot the enemy jungler, hug the side you have warded. This way, if you get ganked from the side without vision, you can simply run towards your warded side to escape. The vast majority of the time, this will spot the enemy jungler before this ward expires. When you see them, make sure to hit tab to check their CS. Each camp is worth 4 CS, so you'll be able to identify their opening route. You also want to pay attention to which direction they head to after they finish their raptor camp as it will let you predict their next move. This can let you set up to collapse on invades or set up a counter gank with your jungler. Once your ward expires, you should have enough information to know which side of the map the enemy jungler has path to. Simply hug the opposite side while your ward is down to easily escape any ganks. After your first recall, look to maintain the same raptor ward with your trinket and place a control ward on the same side of the map in the pixel brush. This will give you a ton of extra time to react to jungle ganks, it reveals the enemy jungler's pathing every time they get to the raptors and makes counter ganks and ganks in general easier to set up on your lane. Also, be on the lookout when you place your raptor ward to use that Squire's Bloom plant as it can give you complete information on the enemy jungler. And there you go. Now you have everything you need to use Faker's warding strategy. But it doesn't stop here. We actually did an entire analysis on another Faker strategy called the Smother Technique. If you want to watch it right now, it's already live on our website, skillcap.com. 
We've even included a limited time discount link in the description below, so check it out. And for those of you more patient, we'll make you a deal. If you guys get this video to 5,000 likes, then we'll release it here on YouTube for free. This way, it will let us know you want to see more pro analysis content like this on our YouTube channel instead of only on our website. All right, and that will do it for this one. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.